Good evening. I am Father Smoke, and welcome to the Void. I used to work as a bouncer at several different locations in the Toronto downtown area. I enjoyed working on the patio when I could, despite not being a smoker, because talking to people made time go by faster, and hey, easier to get phone numbers. There was this one place I worked at that always had crazy things happen. The patio was a weak chain link fence with some tarp thrown over it. The club was cheap, so the fence didn't cover the entire area, so I had to be watchful of people trying to sneak in. One night, I felt lazy, so I stood in the opening with my back to the street. I was talking to some people trying to kill the time. I felt someone standing behind me. This wasn't too unusual. Some people get turned away, and when they see me, try to bribe their way through the patio entrance. I was having none of it, so I puffed myself up, determined to ignore him until he gave up. After about ten minutes of this, I started getting a bit creeped out, because this guy was just standing behind me without saying or doing anything. I turned around to tell him to leave, but stopped mid-sentence. This guy was a bit taller than me, lanky, very well dressed. He was also covered from head to toe in blood, completely drenched. I thought he had been in an accident, so I dropped my tough guy routine and started asking him if he was okay. If he needed an ambulance, he calmly responded that he's good. He just wants to find his brothers. I asked him, are you sure? Are your brothers here? He insists that his brothers are here. As they told him, they'd be in the city, not anywhere near Toronto, where the club is located. After his complete obliviousness to what city he's in, the fact that he's soaked in blood, and his intense stare, he wasn't blinking. I called my boss up. When my boss appeared, I gave a quick rundown of what happened. He talked to the guy very briefly, then told him he'd assist. He went and got some patrolling cops. When the cops appeared, one of them lightly touched the bloody guy on the shoulder. That's when the guy started screaming incoherently and tried slashing at him with a small knife that he had been concealing in his pocket. The cops, my boss and I, subdued the guy until he could be cuffed and placed inside a cop car. The guy was screaming loudly and struggling to break out of the cuffs as if the cuffs cut deeply into his wrist the entire time. To this day, I still don't know what the hell happened, or even why. He was soaked in blood. I used to do canine security for many years. I don't particularly believe in the paranormal stuff, but I did get creeped out a couple of times. There was this one site I used to patrol with my dog a few nights a week. It was an old historical farmhouse. From the main road, there was about a kilometer or so. You have to walk down this old dirt road with woods a couple hundred meters on either side. More of a path nowadays than a road. People talk of it being haunted, if you believe in that sort of thing. One night, it was really dark out. I can't remember if it was overcast or if there was no moon that night, but it was black. About two-thirds of the way to the farmhouse, my dog starts acting a little weird. I can feel him getting tense through the leash. He starts to let out really low growls. Every other step, I can see his ears are twitching as my light swings back and forth. It's dark, but I'm sure his hackles are up. Maybe 100 meters or so, after I started noticing him wigging out, he surfs out in front of me, which he only does if there is a perceived threat, he stays about two meters in front of me for a little bit and then stops and starts growling at the darkness. Of course, I'm scanning with my light, but I can't see anything. After years of working with Brew, I have learned to trust him like I trust no person. During one of my scans, I can see about six sets of eyes reflecting my light in the woods. I am certain it was coyotes but damned if I didn't get the wicked shivers up and down. Brew and I retreated and went back to the car. I rode it up as a clear patrol. 
Supernatural or not, I'm not letting my partner scrap it out with half a dozen ghost coyotes. I used to work night shift at a nursing home. I had just started doing my nightly pickup of laundry outside the rooms where they leave their laundry bags. There was this old man, I'll call Chuck, who was a resident there. Chuck hated leaving his laundry outside his door because he thought he wouldn't get his clothing back. After reassuring him for the umpteenth time, he finally let me take it. So, this particular night started off strange. Lights flickered and residents seemed uneasy, fitful sleeping and walking around aimlessly. We tried to get everyone in their rooms and get them in bed. I did notice Chuck wasn't out, but then again, he wasn't exactly the social type, so I brushed it off. As I'm doing my rounds, I see Chuck dressed and standing at the end of the hallway where his room is. I say to him, Chuck, why are you dressed and out of bed? It's late. He turns towards his room and goes in. I finish with that end of the hall and start walking towards Chuck's room. As I approach, the lights in the hallway go out. I take my cell phone and turn on the flashlight. Chuck is standing on the other end of the hall that I had just left from. Confused, I say, Chuck, how did you do that? He walks towards the game room behind a wall and I lose sight of him. I call my supervisor and let her know Chuck's walking around in the dark. I'm too scared to walk there alone to get him and I send security to help me find him. Security shows up and we go into the game room. No Chuck. Security asks if I'm sure I saw him and I say I'm absolutely sure. Let's go back to his room. At this time, I'm simply dumbfounded as to even how this is even happening. We go into his room and Chuck has died. No alarms went off on his monitor. Nothing to alert us he was in any type of distress. The clothes I saw him in were in a bag with a note on the top that said, I couldn't take them with me. I still get the chills when I tell this story. Weird night. In June, July of 2019, there was this guy who started coming into the store I worked at pretty consistently. He was pretty odd, I guess you could say. He was around six foot tall and lanky, with dark patchy facial hair and messy long strands of thinning, oily black hair that contrasted with his extremely pale skin. He spoke in this creepy whisper-like voice and would drag every word out for way too long. And just as he spoke, his movements were slow and drawn out to match. The first time he came in, he asked me what my name was. Then each time he came in after that, he would stop, look at me, and then just say my name in that creepy voice. He gave me bad vibes, but I didn't think much of it. He didn't cause any issues. He would just buy a drink and leave. He was an unproblematic customer, and I felt guilty for being creeped out by him. I would just tell myself to stop being judgmental. Well, one night he comes in and does not stop to say my name. He fast walks right past me to the restroom. His shirt, his arms, and his hands are covered in what appears to be blood. At this point, I'm kind of in a state of shock and confusion. No one else is in the store or the parking lot. It's just me, behind the counter, and a psycho in the restroom. He isn't in there long, only a couple of minutes. Before I know it, here he comes fast walking by and back out the door. He didn't even make an attempt to wash up. At that point, I knew what I had to do. I walked over to the restroom door and pushed it open. As I walk inside, the first thing I notice is the toilet. There was a dead, black bird in the damn toilet. Then I look over at the trash can in the corner and see another black bird just laying there on top. The next morning, 
He was arrested outside of Walmart for smashing the cigarette butt can open and searching through all of the used cigarettes. I haven't seen him again after that night. When I had just graduated high school, I started working at a truck stop a few miles outside of town. I usually worked evenings, but I had to switch shifts with the night shift guy. So there I was at 3 a.m. fighting sleep. A car then pulls into the parking lot and parks. There's a guy in the driver's seat crying and a woman in the passenger seat just staring straight ahead, not moving, no emotion, whatsoever. They sat there for what seemed like an hour. Then the guy gets out and comes in. He grabs a few random items and puts them on the counter. The whole time he is looking all around, checking for other people. There was no one but us for miles. He then stares right into my very soul and says, it's quiet out here, isn't it? So quiet. You can almost hear the angels singing. I muttered something unmemorable, gripped in fear, and luckily he then left. I work as a CNA in a nursing home, and some of the residents are out of their minds. Well, one night a CNA from the other side of the facility came over and said that there had been an emergency call light go off in the bathroom in one of her rooms. Both residents in that room are total care and in no possible way could they have gotten out of bed, pulled the call light cord and gotten back in bed to be asleep and snoring in the 30 seconds it took to check on them. Later on in the night, we had an alarm go off on one of our outside doors Still, the middle of the night, most residents are still sleeping and nobody is missing that could have gone out the door to set the alarm off. We chalk it up to some kid pulling on the door from the outside. The door's magnetic locks are designed to open if you put pressure on them for 10 seconds. It's a required emergency precaution. A nurse and I walk the perimeter of the building, but don't see anything suspicious. About 10 minutes after, we get back inside. I'm checking on my residents when I hear one of them talking to someone. I go in the room to check on her, and she's just laying there, looking at the side of the bed. I ask her what's going on, because I heard her talking, and she says, he wants to get on the bed. He what? I ask. He wants to get on the bed. He wants to get on the bed, the little boy, she said. He wants to get on the bed, but I can't help him up. I checked the whole room, from top to bottom, and every corner possible. I didn't find anything, but I was on edge the rest of the shift. I hope you rest well, my friends. And remember, don't worry about the voices that are crying in the corner of your room. <laughs>